Now, I know you're familiar with the story, and I know you understand uh, that you know, we're going to talk about Daniel and the lion's den, and you're trying to figure out, well, what does that really compare to in my life? What lion's den is, am, I in, am I in? And you're trying to figure out what situation relates to that story. Uh, some of you are stretching it a little bit. Having your mother-in-law move in you is not living in a lion's den. Uh, and there are other stories like that that really don't, don't compare. But let's, let's kind of go back real fast and let's remember how all this happened. Uh, Jerusalem was warned and warned and warned by the prophets that if they did not repent, God would bring judgment. They did not repent. They did not listen to Isaiah, did not listen to Jeremiah. And so judgment comes. And at the beginning of Daniel's book, he tells us that God gave Jerusalem over to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, and a series of deportations beginning in 597, uh, Daniel and his friends were taken to Babylon. Babylon had a way of dealing with captured nations. They would take the best and the brightest. They would bring them uh, to Babylon. They would train them for three years or so, and at the end of that training they would be Babylonian, and they would be used as administrators, bureaucrats throughout the Babylonian Empire. Daniel and his friends, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, approve, approve themselves to be ten times better than everybody else. So early on, Daniel and his friends had set themselves apart from the other servants and counselors of, of the king. It was Daniel who interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream and is again rewarded and set apart. It is the three friends who go through the fiery furnace and again show themselves to be unique among all of the king's advisors and counselors. And now we have the story of Darius. Remember the dream said that after the Babylonian king would come the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. Not quite as grand as the Babylonian kingdom, but still very significant. Now we're in that transition. And Daniel has been recognized by the new administration as being somebody of value, somebody they wanted to hold on to. So Darius begins to put his government system in place. And he appoints 120 satraps, governors, rulers to be over the kingdom, and he puts three governors over the satrap so that they would not rip him off. Nothing changes much, does it? Now, Daniel had already proven himself to be the best advisor counselor that Darius had. So Darius was going to put him in charge of everything, and that's when everybody else got jealous. Everybody else got mad, and they began to try to look for ways to trap him. They looked for invoices that were missing. They looked for misspent funds. Uh, they looked for anything where Daniel had not been squeaky clean, and they couldn't find anything. Now, can you imagine being investigated by 120 crooks? Okay, they knew what they would do. They knew how they would have handled it. They knew what they would do. So they knew what to look for. Daniel was squeaky clean, and finally they decide among themselves, the only way we'll trip him up is to get him with his God. And so they come to Darius. Darius, may you live forever. Listen, we need to do something about your brand. We need to put you out there. We need to, to establish your name. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Why don't we just make it all about you for the next 30 days? We're not going to make it about you forever. You're not God for all time, but just 30 days. How many of you have ever said, if I could just be in charge for a week, I could straighten things out? You don't want to be in charge forever. Just a week. Just 30 days. So Darius, we're going to get you out on social media. We're going to tell everybody about what you're doing, and we're going to get you a Twitter account and a Facebook page. You're going to be out on Instagram. It's all going to be about you for the next 30 days. Now, just with what I've told you and what you're reading about what you now have to do to be successful in this world is establish your own brand, establish your own unique, who are you? What are you more concerned about? Are you Daniel or are you Darius? Some of you are worried about the lion's den, and you won't even make it to the lion's den. The lions will get you before you get there. Lions aren't only constrained to the lion's den. First Peter tells us our enemy, the devil, stalks like a roaring lion looking for somebody that he can devour. 
these satraps, governors, administrators, and bureaucrats, they were all blowing smoke at Darius, were not his friends. They were using him. They were professional bureaucrats who had learned to manipulate the system. They didn't care whose system it was. They had learned to survive. One of the most disappointing moments of my life is when I started following politics, and I realized that lobbying groups and corporations give money to both Republicans and Democrats. You would think that there would be a strong opinion one way or the other. We want this person or that person. But they always hedge their bets. They don't care who's in power. They know how to work the system. These satraps, these governors, these administrators didn't care if it was Darius or anybody else. We can learn to work the system. We can learn to make it work for us. And, Daniel, and Darius was eaten up before he ever got to the lion's den. So are you Darius or are you Daniel? Do you think it's more about you? Is that what consumes you? Is that what keeps you up at night? You think it's all about you? You think it's all about, uh, up to you? Then you're Darius and not Daniel. Daniel hears that the edict is signed. What does Daniel do? Hires an attorney and demands his rights. No. He goes home. He goes and he prays the same way he's always prayed. Did you see what he did, what he prayed for? 